first. Look at verse 25. Like Simeon, seek the spirit-filled life God offers. And it says, behold, there's this man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and that, I mean, Anna, we know her husband and her tribe and how old she was. This guy, we know nothing, just his name. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. Let me ask you a question. Now, now we're back in the coffee shop. And this is where the, when you're discipling someone, they can tell. You look at him and say, how, do, how would you get the Holy Spirit on you like that? How, how did Simeon, how do you think that happened? Did the Lord knock him off his horse like Paul? How did Simeon get filled with the Spirit? And then you look at him and say, did you know that the Bible explains this? And 600 years before Simeon, God told everyone how they could have him filling their life? Take a moment, now just stay your finger in Luke, but go back to Jeremiah with me, 29. Now, what I want you to see here is, how does anyone get God to enter their life? God said long before Simeon's day, in Jeremiah 29 and verse 13, in fact, 600 years before Christ's birth, God explains how you get his attention, okay? And this is how we get the Spirit of God upon us. This is the secret, Jeremiah 29, 13. And you will seek me, and you will find me. What does it say? When you search for me, what? With all your heart. Thank you. You just said it. And I have them say it. In fact, I ask people, the key parts, I have them repeat. I say, say that again. With all your what? With all your heart. And then I pause and, and I ask them some questions. Now, building up to this, it means that Simeon had sought God. Simeon had opened his life to God. Simeon had surrendered to God's control. Simeon wanted God's way. He wanted God's control. And when you want God's control, God controls us through his spirit, but he doesn't force himself. He waits for an invitation. And when we invite him in, when we, Jeremiah 29, 13, when we seek him and find him with all of our heart, when we say, God, I want what you have promised. In fact, one of the passages we didn't look at in Luke that is a wonderful passage says that God if a parent will give stuff to their children, how much more will God give the Holy Spirit to anybody that asks him? It's not like the Lord's holding out for you to ask hard enough, long enough, you know. If, if we just desire him with all of our... You ever talk to someone you tell you don't quite have all their attention? They're going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and they're doing something else, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or you can hear the keyboard in the background while you're, you know, they're still typing away or whatever they're doing. God says, I want you to stop everything and completely focus on me and want me with all your heart. Now, this is when, and let's go back to Luke 2.25, because this is when I pause. And do you see why Paul told Titus while he was being a missionary on the island of Crete? He said, the only way you're going to transform these newcomers to the faith in Christ is to send out a legion of a little bit older in the faith, men and women, to sit face to face with them. See, discipleship is best accomplished face to face. And you start looking at people and ask them questions, okay? This is a typical question that I would ask to my person, whoever it is I'm meeting with. I smile at them. I say, could I ask you a question? Of course, there's only two of us. What would they say? Oh, sure. I say, how long has it been since you ask God to take over the plans of your life? Like all your plans, your financial plans. Have you asked God to take that over? How about your education plans? How about your relational plans, you know, your dating life? Uh, how about your career? You know, the law. How long has it been since you ask God to take over your plans, and you spread them out before the Lord. There's this beautiful picture of Hezekiah uh, that, that is uh, both in Chronicles and in Isaiah. And it's a picture of Isaiah had a, uh, I mean, uh, Hezekiah had a quandary, and he took the, the letter that was troubling him, and he spread it out in front of the Lord. He said, I don't know what to do. 
How long has it been since you spread out your life's plan to the Lord and said, is this what you want? Are these my plans or yours? I don't want my plans. And then you just pause and you go, I think, oh, am I supposed to answer? You go, mm -hmm. And he said, I don't even know what that means. How, how do you do that? Well, then you explain it. You say, this is the, the perfect example. Now, do you remember, Jesus thrilled the common people because he talked about things they all could picture. He talked about sowers and seeds. They all had grown up walking around and having someone throwing seeds and some of it fell in front of them. And they could just, they saw that. And the lilies of the field and fishermen and, and everything, you know. You have to bring the, the first century or before stuff down to where they can see it in life. So what's a typical example of surrender in our culture? How about this? How long since you parked the car of your life? In other words, we're driving through life going wherever we want, and we pull over, turn it off, pull out the keys, get out of the car, and surrender the keys, the steering wheel, and the driver's seat to God. Now there is a concrete picture of what Jeremiah 29, 13 is talking about. So, so you, you look at them. Remember, this is a question. When was the last time you stopped everything in life, parked, turned everything off, said, God, I don't want to go another foot in life in the driver's seat? This is consecration. This is surrender. This is dedication. But... What's so interesting is life gets going so fast that we run out of the door and jump in the car and take off and the Lord is riding either in the trunk, the back seat, maybe in the front seat, you know, depends on how important he was to us that day. And we're just buzzing off and all of a sudden we go, oh, sorry. And we have to consciously, see this, is, this usually is accomplished in our devotional times after the Lord, after we pray and he starts opening the word to us and we are, we're reading and we read long enough that all of a sudden we say, oh, Lord, how much of the last day or two or week or month have I just worked on my own? It doesn't stop there. I mean, here's a couple more questions because you have to keep talking until they can connect. How long has it been since you were personally aware of his presence in your heart and life each day? Th that you were aware... It's kind of like when you invite the Lord into your life, it isn't like you have to follow him around all day long looking for him. If you invite the Lord into your life, you can still be a, a warrior like David or a, a farmer like most of the Israelites were in, in their ancient lives and David is a shepherd. It, it, you don't have to just sit there and say, oh Lord, I don't want to stop thinking about you. He interrupts our day with his presence. How long has it been since you were personally aware of his presence in your heart and life each day? I mean, I was a corporate salesman. I worked for American Home, Wyeth, and Ayers, and all the drug companies, and traveled crisscross the country and flew, and, you know, just that whole fast lifestyle with sales managers on your back and vice presidents, and, and it's like they never give you a free moment. Did you know that the, the Lord can, it's almost like you're coming around the corner in your house and you bump into, well, that happens to me. Anytime I'm home, I get so distracted. I come around the corner and there's Bonnie. I'm immediately distracted when I see Bonnie. You know what I mean? It's just immediate. And, and you know what? It's because I love her, and, and I think sometimes she knows I'm so busy that she just kind of steps out, so I, you know, bump into her. And, and it just, the Lord wants to intercept us all I mean, through life. Just no. do your job and invite the Lord in at the beginning, and you will bump into him all day long. You will become aware of his presence in your heart and life. He'll remind you spontaneously of a scripture that you already read or you already learned, and it will flow. How long has it been since you cried out and told the Lord you want to rely on him to lead and guide you? It, see, I'm, these are all saying the same thing. What we're asking is we're inviting the Lord in.